What's up everybody, my name is Lehua and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host the podcast Across Worlds and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today we are reviewing Sarek and Soki Spirit Chronicles. And if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. So we are reviewing Sarek and Soki Spirit Chronicles. I'm just going to call it Spirit Chronicles and... If I ever hear a shorter name for this title, I will use it, but I don't know it right now. So it's Spirit Chronicles for now. We are reviewing episode one and it was good. I'm like, okay, okay. I was like a little, um, you know, uh, edge about it because I saw the thumbnail and I read the story. At first I saw the thumbnail and it was like one guy and many girls. So I was thinking, harem man harems but then i read the synopsis and it's about how he started in the slums i'm like ooh, i like the kind where they start from the bomb and they work their way up they go through hardships and such i'm like okay they're working for it it's not like a mary sue kind of thing so in the episode we start with our male lead he's in on earth he's on earth he's thinking about like a childhood friend they promised to marry and then he's riding the bus and they get hit by a train. And in my reaction, I'm like, oh, usually it's a truck, you know, a delivery truck that hits you at nighttime. But no, this time it's a train. Brah! <laughs> it hit this bus really hard. And then he wakes up in the Isekai world. He wakes up as a boy. He's all shaggy, ragged, and it looks like he's a common, commoner boy. He woke up in the slums. His name is Ryu. So we're going to call him Rio from now on because that's his new name and his new life. And it, he wakes up in a house and these guys come in, these adults, they look like thugs and they say that they got some tango go for doing like a transport thing. And I'm thinking, okay, you must have done something super, super shady because tango means the stakes was high. And so Rio, he comes out and he's trying to, you know, calm down get his mind together he's like okay i am rio i did have memories from another life and usually in some isekai the people who get reincarnated they wake up or they're born they're born with memories from their past lives so they knew from the very beginning and as they grow they kind of have like adult minds <clears throat> and usually there's some comedy with that but this one, it's like Rio just suddenly got his memories from his past life. So it's like he lived his life as Rio at Engine, and then all of a sudden he got memories from his past life. So it's like, okay, you know who you are. You are Rio. That is who you are. It's not like you have to make that your life. You lived it. It's just you got memories now. You got information that you can apply to live this life. Anyways, he's outside, he meets these girls. They're looking for someone. It's like, okay, these girls are looking for someone. And one who talks to him a lot, her name is Celia. Celia, she's super nice. She's, you can tell they're nobles. She knows how to talk to people of like different classes, really nice and such. So you're thinking, okay, this is someone he's going to interact with multiple times because we got her name. She's really nice. Okay. We know we're going to see her again. And they're looking for someone. They're like, oh, have you seen someone with purple hair? Da, 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 da. And I think this is really interesting. They actually asked him how they can look for their missing person in the slums. And he's the one who told them, oh, they shouldn't go because of the way they're dressed. And they asked, oh, how should they dress? And he's like, well, you should dress like a commoner, but more tattered. <laughs> It's like, and they're all wearing cloaks. So it's like, that's how bad it is. That's, that's how well made their cloaks were. Their cloaks were so well made. You can tell it's from a higher class. It's from nobles. You, you can't hide it. <laughs> Anyways, so they separate Rio. He goes to the house and he just finds people dead. People are dead. He's like, oh, what? And it turns out someone assassinated the people and... Rio was about to die and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this lady just manifested, she freezes time 
freezes time and she manifests and she's like i'm gonna teach you magic i'm gonna teach you how to <laughs> use your abilities and such and it's either one she froze time or two this conversation is going so fast <laughs> like it's instant going at lightning speed and then she fuses herself with him he learns all this stuff and then he's able to fight against this assassin dude it's really cool the graphics was great i was like what and the effects it was there's a lot of light a lot of aura going on i like that and you see Ryo fighting. He takes in all the information from his past life because he used to do like some type of martial arts or something. And he applied that. This little boy was able to fight this assassin-like person. Big dude. And he did this really cool move where he like grabs the guy's arms, wraps his body around it, and he twists it. And you see blood. I'm like, ooh, special effects, awesome. Like, this looks realistic. Really, really cool. Really good. And he defeats the assassin. Then you see the cargo. The thing that the adults that transported that got them 10 gold. It's moving. It's moving. And it turns out it was the purple haired girl that the group of ladies was looking for. And he's like, oh, dang. I knew it. I knew it. Shit. <laughs> so anyways, uh, he's talking to her. She's like, please help me. My father will help you. He'll compensate. He'll reward you. And then she turns her head and she sees the dead people and she faints. She faints. It's like, okay. You know, she's never seen gory stuff like that. And she's a delicate princess. Okay. <laughs> so he's like, okay, I got to take her to the people that was looking for her or to her father at the castle. The girl said it was at the castle. But he's carrying her. He's carrying her. And he runs into that group of girls. And one of them rushes to him and slaps him. Yeah. Right off the bat. Slaps him. Rude, right? Slaps him. And she's like, you lie. You said you've never seen her. But you're holding her. You were part of the people who kidnapped her. Ah, da, 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 da. She's so angry. <laughs> So angry, jumping to conclusions. I'm not liking her at all. So this was good character portrayal. They got me to not like this person so easily. <laughs> and then this other person that was in the group that seemed like she was like a knight. Uh, she seemed she was more well practiced, more experienced in situations like these. So she's trying to be respectful to this little girl that's been a wee arch. And she's like telling her calm down we need to get information out of him and that girl's like detain him i'm not liking her more okay then it comes down to that they need to question him and he's not liking this treatment at all first of all he was trying to bring her to them he was trying to he saved her he's trying to be nice he did something good he didn't deserve to be slapped he's being accused this girl's yelling at him there's just a lot of reasons for him to not cooperate with them for him not to be nice and you can tell he just wants to drop off this girl who fainted and just separate he's like i don't want to do anything with you i nothing he, mm -mm. being with you guys not cool not cool but the nice like no we need you to bring we need to bring you in we need to question you we need the information we need to <clears throat> blah 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 he's like fine because he can tell that there's no way out of this he can't just walk away <sighs> poor guy poor guy next thing we see okay they're investigating the house where he was at the dead people the assassin the assassin didn't die so they were going to take him in to be interrogated and someone in the crowd who's like being all nosy mm -hmm, yep nosy people looking at what's going on at this house Someone in the crowd wearing a cloak. He's like, oh, okay. That person got caught. He takes out this like red rock. I guess the ruby. And he crushes it. And the assassin person, assassin-like person, dies. It's like that person's whole life was in that stone. Or his heart was being represented by that stone and it got crushed. <laughs> That's something I haven't seen. Then we see another scene 
where the boy, instead of being questioned and such, he's he's like locked up, his arms are up here, and he's hanging, and these guys are interrogating him, and they're threatening to torture him unless he confesses. And the boy's like, I have nothing to confess. I was just here to tell my story. I saved the princess. You know, I'm I'm not confessing to anything. I did nothing wrong. And the guys are like, no, you did something wrong. Confess or else. And he's like, bring it. <laughs> then it comes to the scene. The princess wakes up and they're like, oh, are you okay? It's a night lady who, you know, was experienced, was trying to calm down the biatch one that overreacted. And then we have Cecilia. We have Celia who is being super nice to Rio. And they're like asking how the princess is doing. And the princess is like, oh, I'm I'm good now. Where's the boy? Where, where is he? The one who saved me. And they're like, oh, you know, he's not here. Uh, he's being held to be questioned and such. And the princess is like, well, bring him here. He saved me. And they're like, oh, that's going to be kind of hard. And I'm thinking they're saying that because he's being tortured. And it turns out it's because there's like a protocol just to meet her. It's like, geez, if you guys' security is this hard, how did she get kidnapped? Right? It's like, you guys are really strict with this. And then the princess is being adamant. She's like, no, you need to bring him here. You need to have me meet him. Like, I need to meet him. I need to thank him. And they're like, okay, fine. We'll do it. So they go to the jails, the dungeons, the torturing area. And they find that Rio was getting brutally tortured. And before they even get to Rio, we have a scene of Rio's torturers, the vice president, vice commander or something, vice captain. That was the name, vice captain. The one who was holding the club, torturing Rio and his subordinates that were surrounding him. The guy was tired. He was breathing heavily. He's like, hurry up and confess. And Rio's like, I'm not confessing. Well, like, he's like, I'm not confessing. Like that because, oh, brah. It looks like he was going to die. And even the vice captain subordinates, they're like, dude, this is not cool. He's dying. Like, he, it seems like he didn't do anything. He didn't kidnap the princess. He did nothing wrong. Like, we, we're, we're not going to get anything out of him. And the vice captain's like, no, he has to confess. We are the ones who were watching the princess. Apparently, she's the second princess. The second princess, she got kidnapped under our watch. And it's like, oh, that's why. That's why you're torturing Rio and trying to get a confession out of him. Because you don't want to get in trouble. You don't want to get busted. And you're taking it out on him. You want him to take the fault. The blame. You want to put the blame on someone else and not on you. Shady. Shady, shady, shady. And this makes me so upset. Because first of all, Rio saved the princess, right? Then we had this girl who slaps him. And then we have this night lady who says, Oh, we have to take you in so you can be questioned. You know, she make like, Oh, you're just being questioned. And then Rio gets tortured what and all he did was save the princess he did something good and he gets tortured i'm so upset with the night lady for not protecting rio for not making sure that he's okay especially since he saved her saved the princess i'm like so upset so upset this was bringing back memories feelings of when i was watching shield hero when the main lead was getting you know, discriminated when he was being treated poorly. Ah, those feelings was coming back. I was like, be real. If you want revenge, if you want to destroy this kingdom, I'm all for it, yo. If you want to turn evil, I'm all for it. <laughs> revenge. <laughs> oh, so this anime was doing it really good in building up in. Giving this main lead, Rio, hardship, discrimination, all these bad experiences that will give him a means to not like these nobles. And making me, as a viewer, be attached to him and be on his side and not liking these nobles. Like, and it's, oh, it's really good. Any, any show, any anime, manga, whatever, that makes me feel this, it's good. 
it makes me invested in the story. And so, back to the story. The Celia, Celia and the knight, they take him in and they heal him. Then when Rio wakes up, they tell him, or Celia, Celia tells him that he's going to meet with the princess and the king. And he's like, oh, okay, uh, can you teach me how to uh, conduct myself in front of the king and the princess? <clears throat> and I thought that was really cool because it's like, okay, I need to know how to work my way around here because it seems like you have to act a certain way, say certain things. And I think he took his experience with the Riach, the one that slapped him, because she was being so particular on how he said things, like protocols and such. I think from his experience with her, he has an understanding that you have to conduct yourself a certain way with these nobles. And he's going to use that information to protect himself because... Since he didn't know how to talk to them, he ended up in that torture area with that vice captain. I'm pretty sure if he knew how to like say certain things, he wouldn't have ended up like that. I think so. And I think he thinks so too. Anyways, back to the show. It gets to the scene. All the royals are together. It turns out the one who slapped Rio was a princess. Mm -hmm. It looks like she's twins with the one that got kidnapped. And the one that got kidnapped seems like the, like the nice princess, you know, like the soft, nice, seer, sensitive. And the other one seems like the opposite. That's why she's so mean. <laughs> I'm sure when we watch this anime some more, we'll get to know her better and understand why she is the way she is. I kind of have an assumption why she's the way she is, uh, but we'll get to that later some other time, some other episode. And you have all the royals together. They're all there. And Rio, he walks in. He presents himself. They cleaned him up. He went from tattered looking orphan to pristine cut hair, wearing a uniform boy. <laughs> and he walks in. He kneels down. He's looking at them. End of episode. It's like, okay, this episode went really well. Had like the, you know, Isekai beginning, you're in the world, you show how they die, and you show up in this other world, you got that, and it just jumps into action. It's like, ooh, okay. And it kind of gives us an idea how the world is. We got the slums, we got the nobles, we got some nobles being kind of shady. There's some type of protocol going on, and the enemies, antagonists, apparently they're trying to kill or kidnap the princess and they know how to kill people with stones. <laughs> and that's my review of Spirit Chronicles episode one so far. If you guys have any input or have any information that you would like to shed light upon us, let me know in the comments below. And in the comments, let me know what you think about that episode, what you think about this video. And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Discord link is available in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. People who watch these videos do like to stop by the stream, have that one-on-one -on -one real-time conversation. You guys are more than welcome. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds. We're talking about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description we are available on all platforms other than that my name is Lehua and this is the Superfina channel reviewing Spirit Chronicles episode 1 hope you guys like this video and I will see you on the next one laters huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible if you also want to be part of the Superfina party you can click over here or become a channel member don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. This bump.